Good evening, everyone, and welcome back from uh, your holiday break. Welcome back to our forum. Today's debate is a very special one for us, not just because it's our first one uh, after the break and uh, the first one of a new season here at EIF, but also because we have an exceptional guest of honor, as you know, uh, with us, Steve Malenko, CEO of Qualcomm. We expect over 60 participants uh, connecting today, including MEPs, members of our forum, representatives from the EU institutions. Before I introduce uh, our chair, uh, Pirabil del Castillo, and of course, uh, Steve, our guest of honor, let me remind you of some uh, house rules to make sure that you from the audience can also participate actively in this debate. All attendees are now on mute. But there will be a Q&A session after the speeches, of course, and you'll be most welcome to take the floor. You'll be unmuted to ask your question. To uh, take the floor, please raise uh, your hand with the raise hand function that you can find on the WebEx app. It is usually under the participants tab. Find a moment to, uh, to locate it. And uh, for your information, even if this debate is being recorded, the questions and answers session won't be disclosed and will be under Chatham House rules uh, as always. We're now ready to start. The floor will go first to uh, MEP Pilar del Castillo, who is the chair of the IF steering committee. Pilar uh, needs no introduction really at our forum, but I'll, I'll still mention that she's a member of the Committee on Industry, Research and Energy at the European Parliament. She has extensive experience in digital policy and in telecommunications regulation. We'll then hear from our special guest, Steve Molenkov. Um, Steve joined Qualcomm as an engineer more than 25 years ago, and he became CEO in uh, 2014. He has helped define and implement the company's strategy and technologies, bringing the benefits of mobile to new industries. And under his leadership, Qualcomm is driving the development and launch of 5G and revolutionizing the way people connect. What is also remarkable about Steve, I must say, is that he's a published IEEE author and an inventor with 38 patents in various technology areas. And he's the chairman of the Technology CEO Council. So very impressive. Thank you so much, Steve, for being with us today. Um, and now over to, to Pilar, please. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Rosa, dear colleagues and EIF uh, members. Uh, thank you very much, especially for joining us uh, in an exchange of views with uh, Steve Molenkov. As Maria Rosa said, uh, Chief Executive Officer of, of Qualcomm Incorporated. Uh, Qualcomm uh, has been instrumental in the deployment of wireless technology across uh, nearly all industrial sector um, broad societal use uh, cases uh, that range from automotive to smart factories to agriculture to smart cities. Uh, likewise, it has played an important role um, in stimulating uh, technological innovation, and I want to stress this, mainly through its contribution to 5G deployments. At a time when uh, the COVID-19 acts as uh, a magnified lens, uh, I can say, and has shown uh, the urgent need uh, for European, uh, this, this kind of you know, magnified lens has shown uh, the, the, the urgent need uh, for Europe to move up a gear in its uh, digitalization, in this digital transformation. Uh, it is a great uh, opportunity in this uh, context uh, to you be able to have an open discussion with Qualcomm CEO. Uh, indeed, uh, digital, uh, I think it can be affirmed that um, uh, with determination even, digital has maintained our economy and society during the crisis. Could you imagine what would have been only 15 years ago, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, with the teleworking, with the kids uh, studying and, and young people in the university studying from home, uh, with uh, the supply, uh, you know, because the e-commerce uh, role 
uh, with entertainment, with uh, the contact uh, with the love, so on and so on and so forth. Totally different. This is a clear example of why we should really um, move up here. Well, in other words, uh, 5G um, uh, productivity uh, and um, competitiveness potential is extraordinary uh, and consequently will be instrumental in our recovery from the crisis. Uh, the question is how far away Europe is from achieving true 5G deployment and fully seizing all uh, its potential, all its opportunities. And it is clear that from a policy maker perspective, we still have uh, work ahead and uh, beyond ensuring that electronic communication code is implemented correctly, correctly, we must eliminate persisting obstacles uh, for 5G deployment and create the conditions for more efficient deployment of new and secure physical infrastructures uh, so that the networks can be rolled out uh, at a lower cost. Uh, so, what is the view of one of the most important stakeholders in the field? We see uh, we are going now to pay all our attention uh, to what uh, uh, Steve uh, Molinkov has uh, to say. Thank you very much, Steve. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Yes, good. Okay, yes, great. Yes, well. Great. All right. Well, thank thank you, Pilar, uh, for the very kind introduction. Thank you, Maria Rosa, for hosting this event uh, and inviting me to speak here as well. I have a, uh, a short um, few remarks and then uh, try to leave as much as possible for the discussion. Um, you know, for me, um, Rejection or uh, progression. When I was a young engineer and a product manager at Qualcomm, I spent a lot of time actually in Europe, uh, a lot of it in France, although some in Germany, um, really working on the initial rollouts of, uh, of 3G in Europe. And uh, and it's something that, that I'm a little bit sad about now because the current uh, engineers that, that work at Qualcomm, and we have about two thirds of our employees are engineers and they're spread around the world. Um, we have labs, of course, in California and Germany, France, uh, New Jersey, Austria, and Taiwan. But what they're unable to do uh, today, at least, is have the ability to, to collaborate in person by traveling back and forth, which is sort of what defined my time uh, in terms of working um, with the European folks. But, but I think it's very important that we maintain that ability to continue to collaborate at the fundamental technology levels uh, as 5G develops. Uh, if you look at what we're doing, uh, we're, we're doing cutting edge development of artificial intelligence in Amsterdam. We're doing chipset design in Munich, uh, technologies for coming uh, editions of 5G and some, someday things that will be in 6G. Uh, and then we're out in the field. We, have, we work with fellow engineers from operators and manufacturers from Italy to Finland. And we're really trying to figure out how we make 5G work. How does it get deployed? And then how do we use it uh, across the board? We could talk about that for a long time. I'm sure that we'll have a, uh, opportunities to talk about that um, in, the, in the question and answer. But the um, 5G is really in a state right now where we're deploying technologies and deploying the business models that will be built on top of these technologies. And although the pandemic is certainly something that focuses it, as you as you mentioned, uh, I think it is an opportunity that. Although it may be more difficult to do that given the environment, it's very important that we do that well uh, because these are the fundamental building blocks that will create the economies that I think everyone wants to be involved in. Um, for me, I've been working in mobile technology for my entire professional life. Uh, as I said, uh, nothing cemented how essential wireless technologies are uh, to our lives than the, this COVID-19 uh, situation. And really, the more access we have to powerful, flexible, secure networks, the more we can keep working, stay connected with our doctors, educate our children, and keep our economies growing and help them rebound and be even stronger than they were before. If I look, the European efforts to foster strategic autonomy is all about resilience. It's all about becoming stronger through industrial through taking steps like becoming the leader in the deployment of 5G networks and taking advantage of 5G. If you look, 
5G networks are spreading uh, quite quickly globally. We have today over 85G commercial networks in 40 countries. The intensity of deployment has, has actually accelerated post the, the COVID-19 situation, especially in China. Europe is actually doing quite well uh, with 5G. It has 35 g networks operating in 15 European countries. Uh, the 5G action plan that the EU put together and the EU and, and the European Commission's decision to harmonize low and mid-band spectrum, very, very important. I think extending that to millimeter wave, extremely important. These are the kind of fundamental uh, policy decisions that allow um, technology to grow, and I applaud you, I applaud, applaud uh, getting to where we are today. Um, 13 EU countries have auctioned 5G spectrum, 11 or more are planning to auction it by the end of 2020. And uh, as, as I said, it's very important to, to continue to do that. Um, I don't think uh, any region gets the importance of standardized technology like uh, as much as Europe does. Uh, if you look at our industry, uh, it is built upon really the fundamental um, technology sharing processes that underlie Etsy and really the standardization bodies uh, that are around it. It is the fundamental um, place where companies like us, which invent technology, come and they share technology and allow, um, really allow the industry to grow. And so the reason that we can talk to anyone anywhere around the world is because of that technology being organized that way. It's really rules that were written years ago by the, uh, the, the Europeans and have been, I think, successfully nurtured through that time period. So uh, all of the efforts that uh, that you all make in continuing that to happen are very important, not just to the growth of Europe, but actually to the growth of the industry worldwide. Very, very important. It's one of the reasons why we uh, we want to make sure that we're key uh, contributors to European technology industry, both at the employment level, but also at the policy level. It's just one of the reasons why uh, it was, I felt it important personally to come and to share perspectives with, with you. I have a lot of remarks that I could, I could go into about examples. I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to talk about it. Suffice it to say, um, we are engaged in basically everything related to 5G and the application of 5G actively involved with industry participants in Europe, from car manufacturers to healthcare, to remote delivery of education, to private networks, which are essentially an opportunity for um, new use cases that support the industry of the future to grow. We're actively working with partners here in Europe to continue to, to, to do that. And, and although I think um, people often talk about it uh, in a very negative way, I think it's an opportunity, a tremendous opportunity to start at the early stage of the, of the deployment of these technologies, because that's when you really learn and, and uh, create the businesses of the future. So uh, anything that we can do to shape that perspective, help create uh, policies that enable that to occur, uh, we want to do that. We think it's very important for our business. We think it's very important for the industry in general. With that, I think what I'll do is maybe stop my, um, my prepared remarks, other than to say, um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a very important time for the deployment of 5G. Uh, Europe is continuing to do, I think, a very good job. Uh, extend that to millimeter wave. That'd be the one takeaway that I would suggest is very important. Um, but uh, but I think we're we um, our business model I think is quite quite suited for where 5G is going, and uh, we look forward to uh, sharing those perspectives and. Uh, and continuing the, uh, I think, the successful journey that we've had over 3G, 4G, and, and now 5G. So with that, thank you very much, and I look forward to, uh, to talking with you more.